And then we come to the thing that you are uh, really interested in, which is the uh, RP versus GA. Okay. Mm. First of all, what is RP? Do you have a um, any understanding of uh, RP as a child when, when you were little? Um, so RP, as I understand it, is received pronunciation. So it's the the BBC's voice of Britain, voice of the empire that they made when the BBC started as a radio station. So it's to have a perfect, clear, neutral, very formal English, so understandable, and, and when, but also very uh, to paint itself, uh -huh. paint the government itself in, in, in a certain light. That's my understanding of RP. And right. then obviously the news, news teams would continue with that until I think the 1970s. Uh, my, my dad actually worked on the radio uh, in the UK for a number of years. And, uh, right. All of the BBC presenters, you know, there was a heavy bias on RP, and uh, I think that probably influenced him a little bit. He's not per se an RP; he hasn't he doesn't speak with an RP accent particularly, but he doesn't have the regional accent that his family's from. His family's from um, uh, from just outside of Birmingham, Oldbury, which is a place called the Black Country, which is quite a regional accent. I'm not going to embarrass myself and show you what it sounds like, <laughs> but um, I can't even do a good one. But um, uh, his accent, he hasn't got that accent. Uh, yeah. His accent has changed because of his work. Uh, working on the radio to, to be understandable, he did actually, it seems, adjust his accent slightly. But it's not still quite RP. Right. Um, but uh, I think that influenced him a bit as well. That was the context of his work. Right. Okay. Mm. Some say that the RP has been, you know, reduced to only a small, very, very small community of people mm. who speak actual RP. But most, uh, even if the BBC radio announcers, they don't speak RP. They have a BBC accent, which mm -hmm. is the uh, uh, typical to that particular broadcasting station. Right. Yeah. So what about GA then? Do you think you speak GA, General American English, or have you ever heard of that term before? So I only what became aware of RP versus GA and and all that, uh, mm. um, all the intricacies that are that are associated with those terms. When I started teaching English, all right. Um, before I started, before I was uh, teaching English, it never even came to mind that yeah. there was a you know some major difference or uh, you know obviously we all know that there's a difference between a British English uh, accent and an American accent. But even within the states, you have Boston accent, you have Texan accent, you have Louisiana. You know, there's there's very particular accents even within the states and even within um, oh, yeah. Britain itself or the UK rather. Mm. Um, so when it comes to GA, um, I think, like I said, Canada is, co is caught kind of in the middle between the two. Um, and so I think I speak a very um, similar, similar accent to GA, especially because I'm in Toronto. Toronto is so close to the, sta yeah. to the States. We travel a lot. Yes. Uh, many Torontonians go to the States on a, you know, monthly basis, I would right, say. Yeah. Uh, so we're quite connected to them. Um, and also we are a very multicultural city. So, so we maintain a very neutral accent, I think. Yeah. Um, because there's so many different things coming in, uh, so many different uh, accents and pronunciations. And so I think Toronto is like a very nice uh, stew of all kinds of different pronunciation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. And guys, if you've been listening closely, as the uh, uh, Joanna just mentioned, it's a neutral. It's a neutral way of speaking. Mm. Okay, yeah. it is not a, a biased uh, status symbol or anything. Mm -hmm. But you will be surprised that in China, a lot of uh, English pronunciation teachers they, they specialize in teaching pronunciation. They would claim that they speak a pure English accent or idiomatic English accent or standard English accent. Mm. You see, for me, that's false advertisement. You know, mm. because they are trying to advertise things like you know standard English. Uh, idiomatic English or pure English in the, in the wrong way, mm -hmm. in the wrong way, because there isn't a pure accent. Even the Queen has changed over the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also the Queen's also, it seems, a, is actually quite detached from, from normal, yeah. normal parlance. That's not how most people speak. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so if, if the Queen can change, then there's no pure accent any longer, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's establish that. And also uh, this slide is all about what standard English really is. If you want to try and describe and find a model that's called standard English, it is written English. It is not spoken English at all. Okay, so you can read that in your spare time, and we are going to move swiftly on what you are really, really uh, interested in, which is the way the native speakers speak differently, and that will be fun. Okay? <laughs> so let's move on to the to the fun point number one. <laughs> 
Okay, that is called the roticity. Well, mm -hmm. that's a that's a terminology. Basically, it's it's whether or not the R in the uh, in the word is 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 pronounced or not. Okay, for example, um, Richard, would you start? And sure. Uh, yeah. So short, bird, fear, care, and father. No R. No R. <laughs> no R. And that's natural, right? Right. That's natural. And Joanna. Uh, short bird. Fear, care, father. Lots of ours. Lots of ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, my my take on that is that, um, for example, uh, today I, I'm speaking both accents because I'm mingling with this small community here. I speak to Richard in uh, Queen's English and I speak to Joanna in the neutral tone. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to mingle. And and uh, as you can see, uh, if I'm if I'm alone, I'm 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 studied with the British accent because I studied in the UK for, and I worked there for around one year. So two years of immersion would inc would encourage me to side with the uh, British accent. And uh, the thing is, um, a lot of students, especially in China, they learn the American R. Like what you mentioned, the the bird, the mm. er sound mm. is very dark, and you know, uh, the r sound. But they use it everywhere. For example, they use it in China. Mm. They don't say China, but it should be China. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so whether or not you can you can um, find a way of have you found a way of teaching them when they say er and when they do not, or is it something you are you are yet to discover? You go ahead. Uh, so. Yeah, the specific, and I, I just echoing what you said. It's, it's true. I've found that the, the, the Chinese accent when they're learning uh, English that there is a heavy that R appears or the, the R sound appears yeah. because it, it's it's a very strong sound in Chinese. Uh, yeah. So uh, it, it's natural that it would follow from that. Um, so the main thing I've found is to focus on vowels and just trying to to, to emphasize more on the the natural vowel, the, mm -hmm. the core vowel sound, and then that follow on R or R sound. It tends to diminish if you try and focus more on the vowel. Right. Yeah, that's okay. what I found at least. Like, I guess a lot of uh, uh, Chinese learners, they, the Chinese English learners, they're, they're trying to try to speak with an American accent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're trying to do it because the, the movies, the, the Hollywood, you're yeah. such an influencer. Right. Yeah, so um, you can't blame them. But the, the, the thing is, you have to figure out a way of not allowing them the freedom of using the er sound everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, maybe it's something that we should. Consider, yeah. Yeah. So for me, when I teach, I, I guess I use my own personal learning style when I'm modeling, um, and and that sometimes helps students. Um, so what what I, when I learn, I write things out quite a bit. Um, yeah. So I'm a visual learner. I like to see what I'm learning at the same time. And so very often, if I if I notice a problem like that. I'll write the word China, put the R at the end, and cross it out. <laughs> like I will, I will actually use color and everything, um, and and try and illustrate it that way. And it, I think that visual image of the red ink all over the R kind of reminds them, even in the future when they think about saying that word, they that image flashes be before their eyes, and they you know remember that it's just China. There's no R at the end. <laughs> That's a, that's a great way. Okay, you, you use your multiple senses. Okay, to 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 em emphasize the, this particular point. Okay, let's go to fun point number two, which is the different qualities in saying the two sounds. For example, Joanna, I'm have to enlist your help here. Mm -hmm. Please say those three words as natural as possible. Mary, Mary, Mary. <laughs> so that's the same word. Sounds <laughs> like word. the same word. Yeah. Sounds like the same word. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Richard, how uh, would you pronounce them? Mary, Mary, and Mary. So you can see that that's that's how uh, this this particular point is all about. You have to uh, really put them into context. Yeah. yeah. So uh, guys, when you learn English pronunciation, you just just follow a particular reference model like the G A or R P. What you should do is put them into context. So learning pronunciation is all about contextualization. Otherwise, you will speak those three words the same and confuse yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's uh, number two and number three. Uh, this is the most obvious one, right? Yeah, this is the yeah the, the a the a sound in my opinion is the biggest difference between the British and American pronunciations. The a is very quite harsh in my opinion. The, the plant ask <laughs> very strong. <laughs> Uh, whereas plant and ask mm -hmm. much softer. That's that's my take on it at least. Um, yeah. And it's uh, to us to the ear. I think to anyone's ear when you listen to English, uh, English or British English and American English, that is probably the strongest, most obvious difference between the two. Um, yeah. Right. 
answer, advance, can't, and can't and can't, probably the most common one you hear. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it's definitely can't. Mm. Yeah. Can't do it. That's right. It. Uh, and also, once again, you don't put the, this, this quality difference in every word. For example, in S T A R T, you don't say stat. You don't, you don't do that. It's, it's mm. start. Yes. Mm. But you put the R in, mm. in it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, no wonder English is so difficult to learn, everybody. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you have to be aware of all the uh, traps and the uh, outlaws, you know. And uh, fun point number four. So, Richard, mm. how do you pronounce N O T? N O T is not. Joanna? Not. And uh, H O T? Hot. Hot. Guys, can you, can you hear the, the difference? Well, it's, it's not so much if you listen to the, the individual sounds, but if you think of it in the way that the, the visual, you visually represent it, for example, the ah is a widely open sound. For example, hot, not. Mm. But the, uh, what Joanna just did is more relaxed, mm -hmm. or in her own terms, lazier. Lazier. <laughs> uh, no, straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't say ah, you say ah, not. No. Job, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, things like that. So um, you you will see that, that that's the difference, and that's why they in international phonetic symbols, the choice of symbols are different. So once you have mastered one system, for example, you studied uh, the G A symbols. Remember, there is another system, the R P symbols. So if you put them together, you would see there is a difference. And already on this slide, you can see there is a difference. Okay, and also fun point number five. The way you say the letter O, Richard? So, uh, slow. Mm -hmm. um, That's the uh, O sound, and also the O-W. The O-W, for example, how do you say R-O-W? R, row. Row, okay. And, and you? Row. Okay. It's, so it's, it's much more brief, I guess. Yeah. 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 Again, lazier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, spend lazier. so much time on like, Row. row <laughs> we yeah. just say row. <laughs> it's certainly slower with, with my yeah, row, row versus row. Row, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, even, even you're trying to imitate it, it's yeah. difficult, right? You're right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got to have to focus to do it, yeah. Yeah. You see, the, the glide, it's all about guys, it's all about the glide. The British English, they tend to use the uh, glide much more than the American way of saying it. For example, in the ancient times, the old English, they even have hello, uh, things like that. Uh, oh, it's, 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 it's quite noticeable, yes. the glide. Instead of saying, oh, 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 slow, slow, slow. <laughs> you have to take it nice and slow. <laughs> right, slow. <laughs> um, I, I, I recall that uh, when I first watched the film Titanic, mm -hmm. um, the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, saying the female lead, the rose, it's like, it's not rose, it's rose. Rose, mm -hmm. rose. It's, it's very abrupt. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, I, and I thought to myself, wow, okay, so that's, that's not the way I heard when I was studying in, 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 in my English classes. Because my teacher, uh, back then, she studied in the UK for two months. And one thing she picked up is the way of saying O oh in, in a more, you know, uh, lengthy way. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, guys, that's another thing you have to consider in terms of the quality between the O sound. Fun point number six. Wow, this is difficult. Okay. Mm. So, uh, Richard, how do you say M A T T E R? Matter. And? Matter. So, matter and matter. <laughs> this is another example is um, uh, computer versus. Uh -huh. Computer. Yeah, there's no D in computer, so I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and also, there's, uh, there's another word. I just try to uh, get your help here. It's, for example, D A D D Y. How do you pronounce it? Daddy. And uh, daddy. So when when you say daddy, uh, it's it's a very swift. It's like just a tap, right? Yeah. Daddy, daddy. Mm -hmm. But what about the British way? Daddy. So it's more pronounced. Yeah. daddy, daddy. But not yeah. so so separate. Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, really achieve something in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's 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 really difficult because they they have a, a very long article. If you if you try to uh, read about it, I have this mm -hmm. very long article, um, very eloquently analyzing the difference between different T's and different D's. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have the, the, the stop T, the glottal T, mm -hmm. and also you have the uh, something have the, uh, more nasalized, for example, like a, like a button. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it's more glottal and more, more nasalized. And also you have the, the, the T-L-E, the bottle. Okay. bottle, bottle. Mm -hmm. 
So, so that's, that's, that's more uh, complicated. Yeah. But guys, this particular point is all about the flap T mm -hmm. and the flap D. So it's like matter and uh, party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not party. Mm. <laughs> that's the American way. <laughs> I think I've picked up the D on that one, party. I, I, yeah, party sounds a bit too like posh, I don't know. All right. <laughs> party. Hi, hi. Let's party. party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, number six. Number seven. Number seven is, um, well, it's not universal, I guess. Even within the uh, communities, they have different ideas. But how do you pronounce A S S U M E? You go first. Assume. Yep. Assume. Guys, can you hear the yes sound, Richard? Assume. I can hear that, but I don't hear it in Joanna's pronunciation. So you can see that um, when you pronounce like, uh, like xinwen or news, that's the British way. But the American way of pronouncing that is? News. That's the Canadian way, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> maybe, maybe news. News. Yeah. News. Which without the news versus news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or news, news, news simply news, news. Yeah, yeah. like what you said, assume, yeah. assume, okay. Yeah. So um, that's very, very um, subtle, okay, the difference is really subtle. But you have to understand that this is also uh, a, a part where you distinguish them. Fun point number eight, well, this might not be something that uh, the native speakers might agree. Well, for example, what, what I have on this slide is that in British English, they tend to say a book, but in American English, they tend to say a book. Mm -hmm. Um, would you agree? I think so, yeah. A, if someone said a book in English, in England, uh, it would be odd. Yeah, it's a, a book. It's, it's more, more like that. Yeah. 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 It would sound odd to me. Yeah. And book. I think uh, for, from a Canadian standpoint, definitely a book sounds much more normal. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, if somebody said a book, I wouldn't, it, it would be normal as well. I just, I think, statistically speaking, most, most people in Canada say a book. Right, okay. Um, but I think even within the States, there's a huge difference there as well. Uh -huh. I think within the States as well, they, there's states to say a book, uh -huh. and then there's states to say a book. Right. Yeah. Mm. I like the way you, you just put it. Uh, you said it statistically. Mm. Yeah, you see, there's a special dictionary. Each dictionary for pronunciation is called the uh, pronunciation dictionary. Mm -hmm. It's pu major publishing houses like Longman and uh, Oxford and, and, and Cambridge, they have this pronunciation dictionary. What they have on, in the dictionary is that they have this pie chart. Mm -hmm. it, sell, it tells the, the statistics. For example, like 70% of the uh, British people would pronounce it like this, mm -hmm. but the other 30% would do it like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, if you're interested in the nuances between how within a co particular community people sound different, you can get a pronunciation dictionary and that can help you. Okay. <laughs> So let's move on to number nine. And number nine, for example, how do you how do you describe this animal? R a b b i t. Would you would you pronounce it like um, rabbit? rabbit? Rabbit. Okay. And um, rabbit. It yeah. sounds kind of the same. The a is the rabbit. Yeah. Rabbit versus rabbit. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. There. Rabbit. rabbit. Yeah. yeah. You see, there's a tendency at least according to the dictionary, <laughs> uh, it says that uh, the, uh, uh, both the American and the British, they're trying to uh, reduce the i into a uh. For example, instead of saying rabbit, they say rabbit. Yeah. Rabbit. Yeah. And instead of saying habit, they say habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I say so, yeah. Okay. So um, there's another thing on this slide. It's um, when it's unstressed, when it's unstressed, um, the American English tend to say like uh, roses or roses. They might sound pretty similar, but the British English will still distinguish them, even if they are not stressed. So what would you say? So roses versus roses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's a slight difference. Although it's very soft, though. I mean, roses, plural of, of rose, and roses, ro rose, rosas, rosas. <laughs> <laughs> roses, roses, roses. So that's a, that's only really slight difference, really. I only slight difference. Major yeah. difference. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know what, from your accent what it would sound like. Roses, roses. Yeah. But I mean, I think at this point we're starting to confuse, confuse each, each other. <laughs> <laughs> roses. <laughs> so guys, you see, um, even if you trust a particular academic uh, publication, then you have trouble because native speakers, when they read those 
rules, they will be okay. Is All right. Yeah. Is it supposed to be like that? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. And also, there's another thing.、Um, it's to do with vowel length. British English they tend to、um, focus on that vowel length change, but American English they do not do so. As、um, you know, as obvious as the British. Yeah, I think、uh, in general,、um, because American English, as we've established already, is a little bit lazier.、Mm -hmm. uh, we do use context a lot. Yeah.、Um, to determine meaning,、um, and specifically in Toronto, where it's so multicultural. Yeah.、Um, it it does come down to what are we talking about? <laughs> At the end of the day, you know what what. What context am I using the word in, and then we assume meaning from from that context. Yeah,、mm -hmm. right. Okay, guys, you 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 heard you heard our guests. You see,、um, when you listen to、uh, native speakers speaking, it's not just the way they speak; it's also the context, the situation that particular sound is is positioned. And in terms、yeah. of、uh, when we're talking about pronunciation, I mean, if it's if it's written down, it's one thing, but if it's、uh, something, you know, if it's a clip. Yeah. For example,、mm -hmm. um, I think that's very difficult to determine because you know、um, where the pauses are indicates sort of the the intention and the stress of the the speaker, and I, I think we're going to get to that in a little bit. Yeah. But intonation, pauses,、uh, emphasis,、mm. uh, stress,、mm. um, that's all going to play a role in in meaning as well.、Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just just to emphasize again on on context again. So.、Uh, We've already mentioned that there are different types of accents for all of all languages, but、yep. in English.、Mm -hmm. And、um, you know, if I hear someone who does have a, a different accent, and there are some words that they say differently, or even they use might use a different word, for example, like a, a bread roll versus a, a bread bun. Yeah.、Um, I can figure out what they're talking about based on on the context of the, where we are, as well as the sentence. So、right. native speakers don't have also use that skill. We aren't we're using context as well、right. to understand stuff. It's not just、uh, the precise wording and, and the exact words. We also have to sometimes make guesswork as to what someone might be talking about.、Yeah. Right,、mm. great, and and also, guys,、um, please next time do not waste your time and energy, precious time and energy. I have to say, you know, you have other preoccupations. So when you are setting aside a certain amount of time every day to learn English, do learn them in context.、Mm. If you isolate the sounds out and try to confuse yourself, why does this particular native speaker say it in that way? Who knows? Okay, I don't know that. You don't have to know that. Maybe they burn their tongue with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> There are also individual differences. I have to say. Yeah, I know. Even even the same、um, uh, person uh, speak uh, a particular sound in in different ways in different situations. Definitely.、Okay? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. certainly. There is a number ten here, and I guess we don't. We might not have so many you know subtle differences in this one. We we might have Richard say.、Uh, Missile and hostile, and Joanna. Missile, hostile. Yeah. <laughs> so quite a big difference, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Yeah, and yeah. and and some of those、uh, differences might might cause trouble for students in their listening comprehension.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, because once they learn it's called missile or missile, they would you know just in their in their in their mental map or analysis they will simply rule out. The other option,、mm -hmm. mm. they are trying to look for the missile sound,、mm -hmm. but it's not there.、Mm -hmm. The other day, I had this uh, uh, oral examination because I'm an oral examiner. Those two candidates sat in front of me. One said "adult," the other was confused、adult. because he was because he was constantly looking for the word "adult,"、mm -hmm. but the other constantly、mm -hmm. repeatedly say "adult,"、yeah. and he said, "Do you mean adult?" And the other said. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it adult? I'm so sorry. Adult.、Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so they both <laughs> are back and forth, right? Okay. So、um, you you should know that when you are listening to English, do try to immerse yourself in a variety of accents. In it, when you are speaking, you might follow one particular model, but when you are listening, take all in, take all in. Next thing is to do with the ah sound. For example, when you when you travel, when you commute. To to work and、uh, you take a bus, that's the、uh, that's English English. That's、yeah. the English English. Yeah, bus. yeah, bus. But would you say bus? We say it a little bit shorter, I think, but the vowel like quality is the same, so we say bus. Yeah, it's just shorter. Yeah, lazier. Lazier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bus. Yeah, some American might might say bus, 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 bus. Is yeah, it is more it, of a、right. U sound rather than the bu the bus of the English is more closer to an A. Yeah, bus versus bus. If 
and the American one would be bus. Uh -huh. If it's slightly longer than you, I think. Mm -hmm. At least only a touch, yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Jackie Chan had this famous uh, chasing scene when he um, hung his body, you know, with umbrella mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on a double decker. Yeah. And, and uh, there's a later interview about his famous stunt. And uh, the interviewer repeatedly said, bus, bus, bus. But Jackie Chan uh, understood it uh, fairly well. But one of my students, when watching this particular interview, he said, why, why do they say bus, bus? It should be bus, bus, bus. <laughs> uh, right. So, so that, that's, yeah. that's what left me this, uh, this deep impression about the difference in quality. But as Joanna mentioned, maybe the Canadians, they don't um, speak, you know, they reduce or as lazy as you might do in other sounds uh, for this particular one. Mm -hmm. And next one. We have different pronunciation for those words. And um, would you indulge me and produce, and produce the sounds, for example, the first three one, Richard? Sure. So uh, schedule, process, either, and leisure. So it's four, but yeah. Yeah. Mm. OK. You, 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 you. Have I switched? I think I'm maybe I'm speaking American now. <laughs> schedule, process, either, and leisure. Yeah, the, particularly this, the first one. The first mm. one, is it uh, schedule or... Schedule. Schedule. <laughs> Canadian is defi definitely uh, schedule. Schedule, and yeah. And I, I know this very, because I have a very clear childhood memory of uh, trying to spell schedule on a spelling test. Yeah. Um, and then handing it in and receiving the test back and being like, this is ridiculous, you know? <laughs> what? I mean, there's a C-H, that, that should be a CH sound. I remember being very outraged about this as a child. <laughs> I was absolutely, mm -hmm. I was angry. I didn't think I should have received the grade I received. <laughs> but schedule is definitely how we pronounce yeah. it. Yeah. You see, um, as an English learner, my whole life, and I, I thought that when I, the first time I, I saw uh, the difference, or I noticed the difference between schedule and schedule, and mm -hmm. I found that maybe I, I, I chose the wrong model to, to, to learn. You see, uh, the, uh, previously in China, most of the students and they, they studied British pronunciation. Uh, that's just the norm, mm -hmm. because the materials are written in that way. Mm -hmm. So we studied the spelling S-C-H-E-D-U-L-E, -E, mm -hmm. but we pronounced like schedule. Mm -hmm. That made English learning so difficult, mm -hmm. so difficult. And we cannot find the sound symbol connection there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so I, I thought to myself, maybe it's time for me to switch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, the, there are other words that are so, so persuasive. They did that, for example, like C-L-E-R-K. It looks like a clerk, mm. but when you, when you speak it in a British accent, it's like... Clock. Clock, yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. No, I, I agree with that, but it's, it is clock, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when you were little, when, when you studied those, those uh, words, did you find there's a, there's a mismatch or anything? Oh, no, definitely. I mean, similar story to, to Joanna's, you know, yeah. when, you, when you're learning, just as everyone does, you're learning English at school, you see C-L-E-R-K, you go, well, that's clerk. Yeah. Oh, everywhere else, it's the same rule. And I think I wasn't necessarily at school, but I think in my first job, uh, I would say, okay, I'm going down to the, the, the clerk's office, and they go, you mean the clerk? Yeah. And someone would say, go to the clerk, go and speak to the clerk. Yeah. And they'd be like, clerk, and then you'd see it. Go, oh, it's sort of, you, you'd have to figure it out. Oh, right. But, um, yeah, it, was, it is a confusion. And it's it actually interesting match. because I, I do think that uh, little um, intricacies about language like that definitely show an in-group and out-group. Uh -huh. um, so, for example, one of the things that uh, is very particular about Toronto yeah. is that we don't say Toronto, we yeah. say Toronto. And yeah. If anybody says Toronto, you know they're not oh, from Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> they're they're not. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's that's another way where, you know, I almost think that uh, language particularities are sometimes created artificially just to create an in-group out-group. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't know if you have uh, uh, followed Joanna. Uh, what what she was trying to get at is that there is an in-group. Okay, for example, we have this very small round table here. Now we are in here. Okay, mm -hmm. and we have this out group. We have photographers everywhere and they are out there. Okay, so if you try to sound like uh, an insider, okay, you speak like Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, am I, am I pronouncing Toronto. Right? Toronto, like you, if you say the second T, you're uh -huh. an out. Uh, you're not from, yeah. It's, no, you just Toronto. miss it. Oh, Toronto. you miss it entirely. Yeah, Sorry, Toronto. 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 
Toronto. We just, yeah, we just Toronto. eliminate oh. that T. I don't know why we did that. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, maybe there's some words written down. Uh -huh. But Toronto is what we say. Nobody says Toronto. Nobody says Toronto is where we're at. <laughs> you learned something very precious today. You, you are, when, next time you travel to uh, Toronto, you say Toronto. Right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and then and that... everyone will think you're from Toronto. <laughs> okay. In the same vein, you've probably yep. noticed, but I, uh, English people, yep. so there's a big thing about Britain. And, and so usually when people speak about Britain, they, they call British people. You know, the yeah. British. yeah. But in Britain, it's quite an unusual thing if someone says, you know, I am British. The British don't refer to themselves generally as British. They might say English, Welsh, Irish, or Scottish. Uh, generally, if someone says uh, that, oh, yes, I am I'm British. Yeah. It's only when they speak to someone who's not from Britain. Mm -hmm. If you go, so where are you from in Britain or where are you from? It would say, oh, I'm English or I'm from London. It's very odd for them to say to each other, I'm also British. You would say, usually between British people, you don't refer to yourself as British. Right. It's, okay. a, it's an oddity, yeah. 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 Hmm. Then I have to adjust my, the way I speak because I've been saying British all the time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now I'm, I'm switching to English. Yeah. <laughs>